All right, hello everybody and welcome to today's LT webinar. Um, we're gonna be taking a look on how to engage our students with Care Deck. So before we begin, our board respectfully acknowledges that we are located on the ancestral, traditional, and unceded indigenous territory of the Algonquin peoples on whose territory we pray, learn, play, and work. And if you'll join me in prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear God, you created the world and have loved and cared for us ever since. Please watch over our world now. Please help all the doctors, nurses, and scientists working for healing. Please help our leaders to make good choices. Please keep our educators and our friends safe until we can be together with them again. And please wrap your loving arms around us all and remind us how you are always our good and kind Father. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. All right, welcome everybody. So for today, uh, if you would like to get into the slide deck that I'm gonna be using, that would be the first link at the very top. The second link is gonna take you to a Google form where you can ask questions that we'll be answering at the end of our session today. You can also tweet out your questions or comments um, using the hashtag OCSBLT. Throughout the presentation, you're gonna have the link to the slide deck on every slide. So if you forget, um, it's just gonna be there for you. And then once you get into that slide deck, you're gonna be able to see um, the link to the Google form to ask your questions. So joining us today, ladies, would you like to hop on and introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Steph Pearson. I am LT for uh, St. Pat's, McHugh, St. Pete's, and I feel like I'm missing one, but happy to help anybody who needs help. Hi, I'm Audra Arbenwitz. I'm one of the other consultants, and I am St. Joe's, St. Pat's. Nope, I'm not going to do this. It's all listed on the professional learning website. Perfect. Thank you, ladies. Uh, it's also listed at the last slide uh, for families of schools, but they're going to be here to uh, watch out for Twitter and tweets coming in and to monitor the Google form and to give me the confidence to get through this uh, without uh, messing up too much. Uh, so they're a great uh, source of support for me who is incredibly nervous doing this uh, and talking to a screen. So without further ado, this is the plan for the hour. It's a jam packed hour. So I have a lot to get through in my dry run last night. It took me close to an hour to get through the content. So uh, I'm going to try and move not uh, too fast through the content. Just know that this session is being recorded. It's going to be saved onto YouTube, our, our hashtag OCSV how to YouTube channel, and it's going to be saved on the PD website under webinars. So uh, if I go a little bit too fast, uh, don't worry about it. You can always rewatch the session uh, for parts that you miss. So the plan for today, we're gonna take a look at what Pear Deck is and why do we have the tool? How do you get started with Pear Deck? How do you share it with students? Now that you did an activity, what happens now? And then we're actually gonna try it out live. So what is Pear Deck? Pear Deck is an add-on that works with Google Slides to make your slide deck more engaging. And it's a great way to collect data from your participants as you work your way through a slide deck. So it's a great way to collect assess assessment as for and of. Um, and just know that for today's context, I'm gonna be referring to students a lot, but if you use Google slide decks, this can apply to your role, regardless if you're a teacher or an educator or not. If you use slide decks, this tool is going to be useful. So when I say students, um, if you're a principal, you can think of it in terms of your staff. Uh, you can think of it in terms of adult learners, participants, anybody who is engaging with your slide deck and who you want to uh, be responsive to the content that you're providing. Um, just remember that this applies to you too. Just my comfort level is gonna be referring to students. Right now, only staff can create Pear Decks. So our students engage with it, but only staff at this point create Pear Decks. So it's a tool that you work with uh, Google Slides and you create engaging um, activities throughout to keep, them, um, to keep them interested, to collect assessment, to collect data to inform your practice. Uh, it's a really easy tool that syncs well with our Google products. How do I get started? So this is the first thing that we're going to cover today. 
on how we're going to get started. So I'm going to exit out of presenter mode. All right. So when you open a slide deck, you have two options to find Pear Deck when you're in a Google slide deck. So at the very top, you might see Pear Deck with the little pear icon right at the top. If you don't see that, that's okay. You just need to go to the right-hand side, click Add-ons. Then you want to click Pear Deck for Google Slides add-ons, and you want to open Pear Deck. So that's where you're going to find Pear Deck, right within your Google Slides. So add-ons, Pear Deck, open Pear Deck, add-on. So when I click add on Pear Deck, a toolbar is going to open up on the right hand side of my page. What's really great about this is that it works right side by side with your slide deck. So you don't have to navigate to other tabs. It's seamless and that you can build your content right within that one tool. You don't have to be going elsewhere. So this is the toolbar that I'm talking about that's on the right hand side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go and explore this toolbar a little bit further. So I've started a new slide deck over here. And I first want to open up my toolbar on the right hand side. And when I teach this toolbar to you, I'm actually going to work from the bottom up to show you the different parts that you can access within this one toolbar. So at the bottom, it just talks about uh, how Pear Deck works. So there's a nice little video. When new content comes out, they put a link to it here. So right now their featured content is the Internet Awesome, which really aligns nicely with our Digital Samaritans program. But where we're going to uh, focus the bulk of our time is really in the content itself. So basically, when you have a slide deck, you can create an interactive component for your students or participants. So you can take any slide that you already have and you can add in a way for your students to actually interact with that slide. So when you create a slide deck, you can create brand new slides if you want. But say you have a slide deck that uh, is tried and true, which means that it's not just being reused to be reused, but it actually works with your students. It's responsive to the students' needs that you have in front of you. So you'd like to use it again because it worked. What you're going to do is you can take that old slide deck and you can actually embed some Pear Deck slides within it as well. So a lot of flexibility. You can create new. You can bring in uh, slide decks that you already have. Um, as well, not every slide has to be a Pear Deck slide. And that's going to make a little more sense in a little bit. But not every slide has to be interactive. You can intersperse your content with an interactive component. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you through the six styles of questions that you can use to help with engagement with your students. So the first slide that I created, and I tried to keep it as basic as possible. So think about it. This is the very base level. Of course, you can change font. You can add backgrounds. You can obviously up it uh, very much. But this would be sort of your, I would say, level two, level three. You're meeting the standard. You're doing uh, the important part to get the engagement. But then if you wanted to go above and beyond, uh, you're more than welcome to. So I know that there was a question that already came in talking about how would you use this in uh, the primary context, so working with your littles. This is what I'm seeing a lot of on Twitter uh, right now, and it's a really great way to engage students during distance learning. So what I did is I took this slide. I wrote a simple drawing prompt, draw what you did this weekend. But now I have to tell the slide that I want it to be a drawing slide. So all I have to do is go over to my toolbar, click draw. It's going to add that onto my slide. And there it is. So it may not look very fancy in this view because you're in teacher view. However, you're going to experience what it's like for a student when they see this slide. It looks, it looks very different because you're going to see lots of pen options, color options, all those kinds of things where the student can actually draw on the slide. How do you know that you did it right? Well, if you look at the very bottom, that gray uh, footnote lets you know how the students are gonna interact with the slide. So it actually says students draw anywhere on this slide. So I know that this is now a drawing slide. 
Number two, I'm going to do a draggable slide. So I know that the focus of our math team a lot this year, um, coming from the elementary uh, side of things, was to focus on number lines and number paths for kindergartens. So this might be a really easy way for you to incorporate that learning. So place the dot where you think seven would go on the number line. I did this quick number line, and now I want to make it a draggable type of question. So I click draggable, and now it's gonna layer on top that interactive part. It gives me a few options here. So the draggable, you can actually resize. So maybe you don't want the dot to be too big. But again, if you have littles and fine motor control uh, can be a challenge, maybe you do want a little bit bigger of a dot to uh, just create that accessibility for your students. You can also add another um, type of picture. So maybe you want a couple dots. Maybe you want a flag. So you can add in other draggable options. I believe you can add up to five or six, but no more than that. But for now, we just need one dot that the students are going to drag onto the number line uh, where they think seven would go. And then I'm going to update that slide. So now that slide is going to be a draggable slide where the student would drag the dot. Again, you're not gonna see the dot here because you're in teacher view, but you will get to experience this a little bit later on today. This question, what is your favorite tech tool on the staff portal? So this is just a simple text question where the student would type in their response on the slide. So I'm gonna make that a text slide. And again, if I forget what type of interaction I gave the slide, I can always see it in that little footer note at the bottom. And it also tells me right here in the notes, this is a Pear Deck text slide. So this would just be a simple type out your answer. The next type of question or interactive that you can give is a multiple choice. So I took this question right out of grade nine EQAO. So for the purposes of this webinar, I actually typed the answers onto the slide just so that I didn't have to take time typing them all out. So if you have really long responses for your multiple choice choices, you don't have to type out the full answer in this window. You could al always put it actually on the slide itself, and then the student just has to choose the appropriate letter. So this is going to be a multiple choice question. And so I'm gonna make the options A, B, C, I'm gonna add one more D. So I didn't have time to type it all out, but those actual full choices are located on the slide. So this is a great way to practice those EQAO style questions. Uh, we know that Lauren, our researcher, often talks about how multiple choice is an area of growth for our board and our system. So I think um, presenting multiple choice questions in a different way than they would uh, typically see them really allows that opportunity for the teacher to collect data uh, in real time if you're using the teacher-led option, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit later. Uh, and then you can really look at the reasonableness of answers. So again, you're providing those EQAO style questions that they are going to see on EQAO on those provincial tests, but you're just doing it in a way that might be more engaging for your students. So you're trying to hook them um, and teach those skills that we know uh, they need practice with. And then the one of the other types of slides that you can do, this one's a little bit trickier, but it is a website slide. So what that means is you can embed a code so it's not really about pasting a url or a link it's more about embedding something an embed code into the page and i'll show you what that means with this youtube video so if you're wondering why your students uh, are not having permissions uh accessing certain content it's probably because they're not logged into their chrome profile so here's a great video that bill uh created to show you uh and your students how to probably log into your chrome profile so I want them to have that video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the YouTube video that I want. I'm not going to take the URL at the top. I'm gonna go down, click share. I'm actually gonna choose the embed code. Now this is where it's a little bit tricky and kind of counterintuitive. You can choose to select where the video starts. So I want to start at 30 seconds. Then I'm actually only going to take the URL between the quotation marks. I don't need the whole thing. So then if I right click, choose copy, 
I'm gonna go back to my Pear Deck. I'm gonna add in a website type slide and I'm going to paste my link in there. I'll know that I've done it right because the video will pop up here. And then I'm gonna update slide. If that little window does not pop up with the link that you want, I can now delete that link. If it's not gonna populate that, at the very least, the students would see the link at the bottom and they'd have to click it and pop it open in another window. So it's not, um, it's not wrong if it doesn't work that way. It's just not gonna look as seamless. So when you as the students go in and experience this Pear Deck, you're actually gonna see what that YouTube video looks like embedded right within the slide deck. And then the last slide uh, is a number slide. So similar to a text slide, the student would then be able just to type in a number as their response. So these are the six styles of questions that you can use on any slide that you have in your slide deck. So for text questions, maybe you want students to do complete brain dumps, as we know that the research shows that this is a really great strategy for students to just share their thinking um, before, during, and after teaching a content area or a subject. Multiple choice questions, opinion polls, number questions, obviously lots of questions that can end up, and end up with a number. The drawing slide is really great too if you want students to annotate over top or show their thinking. So I know that uh, Tanya Facinari, a teacher at St. Rita's, actually did an area and perimeter question and uh, put that image on the slide. And then the students were able to draw on top of that slide. So any picture that you put on the slide, the students can draw on top of it. So if you think about the Cartesian plane and math, there's a lot of options when it comes to a drawing slide. It doesn't just have to be a blank white page. And then the draggable uh, option too, think about identifying parts, maybe uh, with that little flag, if they're using Google Maps, you could put a map on there and then they can identify maybe different resources on the map. Lots and lots of different options for you with these types of questions. But say one day you're really stuck, your creative juices just aren't flowing, you're looking for a new, fresh idea. The first thing you're gonna see on that content bar is the template library. So when you click into that template library, you're gonna see lots of different categories of pre-made templates that you can just click and it's gonna put it automatically into your slide deck. So you can see the assessment as for and of, right? Beginning, during and end of lesson. So great opportunities to get exit tickets, to check in with your students, social emotional learning, looking at those six C's. And then down here, there's actual subject areas that you can use, right? Even supporting our ESL population, there's some uh, activities down there as well. So I know that we already had the question about primary students engaging with this tool. So I'm gonna show you some of one template from the Littles. So when you click into it, you actually see lots of different slides that you can use. So you can see how the students would interact with it because it's gonna let you know underneath the slide. This one is very popular, so I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna show you what, what I mean. So once I click that slide, because I like it, I wanna use it, it's actually going to put it right into my slide deck. So once it goes into my slide deck, um, I then have full editing access of the slide. So any template that you see, don't worry if there's one thing that you don't like on that page, you can edit anything on that slide. So you can delete, change, whatever you want um, to make that slide work for you and work for your students more importantly. So this uh, template is circle the items that start with B. So of course it's going to be a drawing slide and it tells you right down here. But one thing I will say about using templates in Pear Deck is that with this slide, uh, because it's one letter of the alphabet, it's not like they have another slide that's the letter T and another slide that's the letter R. You have to create those on your own. So you could duplicate this slide and then change the pictures and change the letter to what you want it to be. So what you see here in the template gallery is what you have. So even for word families, here's one word family. You'd have to create another word family if you wanted uh, them to do that. So just keeping that in mind, but lots of different choices down here for slides uh, that you can use. 
Another one of my favorite ones is the beginning of a lesson. So I always like to sort of take a little diagnostic assessment of where my students are before starting the topic, because that, that's really going to inform my practice moving forward, whether or not I want uh, what I'm going to cover with my students in depth or what they actually already know, and I can sort of uh, not spend as much time on those concepts and leave it for the things that um, they need support with. So here's an example, draw or type two things you already know about today's topic. So when we think about accessibility with our students, we're really trying to think of how can they best show their thinking and their understanding. So again, a student might be able to draw uh, a lot better than typing out a response, right? So if we're limiting our students to only typing out their answers, you're really going to miss a huge chunk of students that may absolutely have been with you in your lesson and engaged and learn and they learned the concept, but because we only limited them to one style of question to share their thinking, you might not be able to, to tap into what they really know. So Pear Deck really allows the opportunity for student choice in sharing their thinking, which is really, really powerful for you as the teacher to use. So again, this is a draw anywhere slide. If you have a drawing slide, Fun fact, the students can also type a little bit on that drawing slide. So that's why it says draw or type, because when you choose a drawing slide, it actually allows an opportunity for you to type out a little bit of an answer. So um, when I think, I'm just looking at my notes, that really is the content bar in a nutshell. You can use that content bar with brand new slides or slides that you already have to create the content for your students. If you want some exam examples that are being used, the template library has lots of different subject areas for all different grades for you to use um, on your slide deck, which is really great. So I'm just going to go back to make sure we're in the right spot. Let's explore. All right. So our next step today is I'm ready to share with my students. So. A couple of things that we want to make sure that we're looking at before we move forward with our students. So you want to make sure that you ask yourself that you toggle on requiring student logins. And I'll explain why that's important and how to do that in a second. Thinking about do you want student paste or teacher paste, which we'll dive into next. Do you want students to get a copy of the slide deck as well as their answers afterwards? There is a potential for that, so I can show you how to do that as well. And have you made your slides accessible and responsive to the students in your class? I think this is really the most important thing. So even though we may have a slide deck that we're very comfortable with, is this slide deck responsive to the students that are sitting in front of you? We've all been in presentations where we sit there and you know the person is just rolling through a slide deck, how engaged are you yourself, right? Be honest with yourself. How engaged are you if someone's just talking at you for a really long time and going through a slide deck? So what you wanna do is when you create your slide deck, you really should be thinking about the students and how they're gonna be engaging with the content. Is it accessible? So uh, one wonderful thing about Pear Deck is that they are consistently innovating this product especially during distance learning, they are coming out with tweets up the wazoo of brand new features that are coming out. So if I go over to this slide, one of the newest ones that I really appreciated is add audio to a slide. So if you think about our students who uh, have difficulties in the area of reading, reading and decoding, if you think about that, some, um, a slide like this might prove to be challenging for them. So what you can do is you can actually add audio to the slide. So if I add audio to my slide, I then as the teacher can say a sentence or two. So I'm gonna practice recording right now. Please place the dot on the number line where you think the number seven goes. So I can resume my recording if I wanted to, so I could chunk the information so I don't have to say it all in one breath. If I like it, I can hit save. I can play it back to make sure that I like it. And if I do like it, I'm gonna add that audio onto a slide. So think about our students who are ESL, who might benefit from having their teacher have the questions read to them. Obviously our students who have trouble decoding the words on the page, um, but also maybe you want to prompt students. Maybe you wanna list some success criteria. Maybe you wanna provide them with some organizational tips or 
um, tips on where to click and how to click. Um, oops, it's not working, so I'm just going to try it again. Please place the number seven on the number line where you think it would go. Let's see if it works this time. So think about, there we go, think about all the accessibility that you're gonna be adding just by having a teacher recording on the page. So this little button is gonna be added onto the slide deck. It means nothing to you right now. So make sure it stays there. It doesn't link to anything, but you're gonna see in student view how it affects the students and what they see. So my audio has been included on that page. So thinking about accessibility, this would be a slide deck I'd be comfortable moving forward with because of all the things that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So now that we've considered all of those things, it's time to actually uh, try it out. So when we think about sharing it with our students, I said that we touch on synchronous versus asynchronous learning. So with Pear Deck, this is probably one of the most powerful tools in Pear Deck is being able to choose whether you want instructor paced or student pace. So there's benefits to both, and it just depends on how you want to engage with your students. So instructor pace activity um, is really good if you want to uh, connect in real time and interact with your students in real time. Because what it's gonna do is the teacher is leading the session, and the students' slides, when, they're, uh, when they have a device in front of them and are using the slide deck that you've provided, what they see is only when you advance the slides yourself. So the teacher is in charge of what the students are seeing and when. So really great if you want that real time because your dashboard's gonna be able to show you what, uh, what the students are responding um, right then. So I know that there are some teachers that are using instruction-based, uh, instructor-paced activities during their Google Meets. So their students are engaging in the slide deck as the teacher is forcing them or forcing the slide deck forward for the students when they think that they're ready to move forward. Um, they're doing that live on a Google Meet. So I think that that's really valuable. And then you have student-paced activity, which is amazing. So this would really support the asynchronous learning style that um, is proving to be really effective during distance learning. So what it does then is when you share the Pear Deck with your students or participants, it's a link. That link is live meaning that the students can log into that Pear Deck anytime, anywhere. The teacher doesn't need to be there to advance the slides. So it means that the students would be working their way through the slide deck at their own pace. So uh, I've seen really great examples of using this in terms of differentiating what's going on in your classroom. So if you think about a small group activity, right, you could have a small group of students working through the slide deck at their own pace, while you're working with a small group over there on uh, sort of closing those gaps that you've identified maybe at some point in their learning. So student pace is really great to support differentiation. And it's also great when you're thinking about moving away from whole group instruction all the time, this is exactly um, where you'd want to go in terms of that. Um, it also lets students review and catch up independently. So if a student um, say missed the lesson, uh, the student can actually work through it at their own pace. Um, if you do assign homework, you could assign it um, as homework or in the classroom embedded where the teacher support is really there for them um, to use. But again, it's ideal for small groups and the teacher doesn't have to be connected. So in terms of our distance learning and what we're seeing uh, is more successful in terms of the equity amongst our families, we know that student paced activity works really, really well. So if you're looking for a place to start, I would start in student paced activity. So when we talk about sharing the Pear Deck, it's gonna get a bit confusing because you probably hear Slide Deck and you probably hear Pear Deck. So if I go back to uh, my Slide Deck over here, I do not want to share the Google Slide Deck with my students. That's gonna give them access to my slides, but it's not gonna give them access to the Pear Deck, in Pear Deck interactivity. So when you share it, you want to make sure that you start the lesson with the big green button. So you would start the lesson up here. Uh, it would then prompt you to choose student paste or teacher paste. And then depending on what you choose, it's going to give you what you need. So if you choose student paste, 
Like I said, it's gonna give you a URL that you copy and you paste. So you can paste that URL into a HAPRA card, that link. You can paste the link into an email, a Google Doc, wherever your students access your information, that's where you can paste the link. If you choose a uh, teacher-led, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna give you a code. So in order to put that code in, the students need to go to a website called, or titled joinpd.com, and you're gonna see it in a second, but that joinpd.com URL link is actually on both student portals if you go and look there. So again, what the LT department tried to do is remove the barriers because you know for some students, joinpd.com um, is enough to already lose some students. So if they click the Pear Deck icon on the student portal, either student portal, they just need to then type in the code. So what we're going to do now, if I go back to my Pear Deck, we're gonna try it out live here today. So this image uh, is very appropriate because I'm terrified to do this live on air. Um, but I think I'm coming from the stance of if I'm not willing to take that risk myself, uh, how do I expect my students to do the same in the classroom? So I'm gonna take a risk. I've never done this before live. Uh, so I thought why not do it right now? And we're actually going to get into the Pear Deck. So this is what I want you to do. You're gonna keep this link open to the live stream, but you're also gonna open up another tab and you're gonna to go to joinpd.com and then you'll type in a code. When you get in, I'm gonna then show you um, how I, the teacher who's running the session, would use Pear Deck in a teacher-led experience. So again, keep this tab open because you will hear my ominous voice as I talk you through it, but you can actually engage in the Pear Deck experience what the student would experience and be able to see the tools. So take a deep breath, take a sip of water, and we're gonna try this live. So I'm going to start my lesson. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm on slide one. I'm gonna start the lesson. I'm gonna choose instructor paste activity. It's now starting a new session for me. and it's launching my presentation. And now it's going to tell me that I'm projecting the code from what uh, where I want my students to get in. So I'm just going to minimize this part because we're gonna come back to it. And now this is what I want you to do. So I want you right now to go to joinpd.com and I want you to type in that code. And I'm gonna wait here for about one minute uh, to see the students get engaged. So I'm going to wait about one minute because there is a 30 second lag for you to get into my hangout right now. Oh, I have 11. Oh my, this is making me so nervous because I don't know how many people are actually out there. Okay, so a lot of people are getting in. Perfect. Perfect, okay, this is making me even more nervous. This is not helpful, everybody. All right. So I'm actually going to start the class now. So you can see this up here. So now uh, you can start engaging in this first slide. So you can start responding as students on this slide. So you're drawing what you did this weekend. If you didn't have time to get into the Pear Deck, the link is actually located in the top right corner. So lots of people are responding, drawing what they did this weekend. Oh, I see Laura, Justin Edge, Tracy Nasralla, thank you. Steph Pearson, lots of tulips. Thank you, Katie, wonderful. So here's something that's really, really, really cool. I've logged in on my mobile device as the teacher. So all I did was type in peardeck.com slash dashboard, logged in with my Google account. So now I'm actually going to run this slide deck on my mobile device, which means that I don't have to be the sage on the stage at the front of the class. 
I can actually walk around and engage with my students. So right now we're in teacher led. So nobody can actually move forward unless I tell them to. So because this is a drawing slide, I'm actually now gonna give a 30 second countdown because I don't wanna take too much time. So I've now set a countdown from my phone to let students know that in about 20 seconds, they're gonna be locked, which means that they can no longer uh, interact with this slide. So we have 10 seconds left. You can see that it actually changes color as it goes through. I can see lots of responses coming in. This is amazing. I'm so excited. Robin, Kyla, Marie, Heather, fantastic. All right, so now this slide is locked. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to force you forward using my phone. And now we're going to be on this slide. So if you can, I'm now going to actually show responses on the screen. So if you come back to the live stream and I show responses, I kind of want you all to come back to the live stream and take a look at what I see. So I'm the teacher right now. I've now shown my responses, show the responses. Now in real time, I can see if my students get the learning or they don't get the learning. So it's a really quick and easy assessment for me to check in with my students and move my teaching forward. So I'm seeing it in real time, which is great. So now I'm gonna go back to hiding responses. I'm gonna move the students forward again. What is your favorite tech tool on the staff portal? I am going to show responses. So just know that your name, Oh, Pear Deck, I feel like that's a biased answer now. How else can you not put Pear Deck? Perfect, Pear Deck, Screencastify, Book Creator, Capra. So if you can go back to, once you type your answer into the Pear Deck, if you can go back to the live stream tab and take a look at what I see. So I'm the teacher, I have now shown the responses. If you can see this, there are no student names attached to it. That's because I'm on project something called projector mode. So I can go ahead and share the answers live onto my screen. I'm gonna move you forward again into one more slide. Here's a multiple choice question. So if you take a look as well back on the live stream, once you submit your answer, I'll be able to get a quick assessment how my students are engaging with it. All right. So because I'm just trying to be cognizant of time, say this is a teacher led, uh, this is a teacher led slide deck. So now I'm at the point where, okay, I've checked in with my students, they're getting the concepts, I see that they're understanding, thinking of that gradual release model, now it's time for me to let them be independent with maybe the rest of my slide deck. So I've checked in with them, they're good. I can now actually change my session to turn on student pace. So what this then means is that right now I'm forcing the slides forward, as all of you can tell, but as soon as I turn on student pace, you'll be able to finish the rest of the slide. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm actually going to set it to student paste. Actually, before I do that, there's one thing I just wanted to touch on. Um, if you have a teachable moment and you want to add a new prompt in, in the middle of a session, you can do that. So you can either copy a slide and do it again. So say you run this math question and you realize that your students didn't quite understand it, Maybe you um, copy that slide deck, you add in a copy of it after you had taught some uh, skill to go along with that question. Maybe you just want a brand new slide because you had a teachable moment, a student had a brilliant uh, reflection that you wanted to include, you can just add in that new prompt. I can also lock the screen whenever I want, so I don't have to wait for the countdown. I can just say no more answers are being accepted. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn on, first I'll unlock the screens. 
then I'm going to turn on student pace mode. It lets me know that here uh, is student pace mode. Here's the link. If I wanted to say the bell rang, I could take that link and pop it in somewhere. Um, or my students can just go and independently continue the lesson on their own. So uh, now you should be able to see if you're in this Pear Deck, you will be able to see that you can just move forward on your own and engage with the content. So it's really nice that you can move um, with that gradual release model where you start with them and then you kind of let them go, which is nice. So I'll give you one minute to kind of finish this Pear Deck and then we'll get going on what to do now that I've, or now that I'm going to end the session. So one more minute and then we'll get started with the other stuff. All right, about 30 more seconds. Perfect, all right. So if everyone can head back to the live stream, I'm gonna show you what you're going to do next if you are the teacher running this session. So I'm just gonna close it on my phone. So when you see Pear Deck, on the staff portal and you click Pear Deck, it's going to take you to the teacher dashboard. So in the top right hand corner, you're going to go to teacher login. And now here you are met with a few different options. So the first thing I'm going to walk you through is I'm going to go up to the top left and hit sessions. So right away, I can see that today at 132, I started a session. Right now, it's not closed, it's not live, it's student pace. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna close the session, okay? So when I end the session, what's really cool, and hopefully it pops up, takeaways. So what I'm going to do is hopefully, it should have published the takeaways. Let's see if it did that. I might not have required it. Do, do, do. There we go. So what you're gonna see now is in your email, when I hit publish takeaways for this session, you as the participant are going to get a Google Doc that has all the slides as well as all of your answers. So keeping in mind that Pear Deck doesn't self-correct anything because a lot of the slides are interactive in the ways of like drawing and draggable where there's no formalized uh, answer. So just keep that in mind. So now I have my session here, I've closed it. I can rename the session um, if I want to. Um, when you end the session, think about naming it, not unnamed session all the time because as you can see, they start to get, they start to build up you'd want to rename your session. So when you end it, you will be prompted to name the session and you can do it right here in the three dots on the right hand side. So I'm going to do live webinar as my name and I'm just going to rename it that way. Your sessions down here will stay here for 30 days. After the 30 days, it's put in archived. Nothing is deleted from archived. You can always restore any session that you have had active at one point or another. So now that I'm here, I can see my session, but I really want to see my student answers. So I can go and click this rectangle on the right hand side and hit the rectangle for the sessions. And here is really great. Here is where I can see all of my student responses. So if I go up to the top, here's my very first question. What did I do? What did you do this weekend? Right now it's in a list view. I would like to see all of my pictures in the same grid layout. So I can actually click grid layout and I can see lots of sunshine, outdoors, this is wonderful. So again, you're really getting that student voice, seeing that student voice even at a distance. Now this is brand new, alarm, alarm, alert, alert. This is a brand new feature that uh, Pear Deck added, I think last night, Audra uh, messaged the group. So I can actually leave 
feedback. So I've never done this before, so I'm not gonna do it live on air, but I just know that I can click the comment. I can leave feedback. Oh, Tracy, way to go. And I can send feedback to my student. So again, the feedback is not two ways. So unfortunately, the student can't formally respond. However, they could add a text box into a slide deck, uh, into um, one of the Pear Decks, and they can respond that way. Now that you've collected the responses, say you want to showcase some really great strategies that you found in a math question, for example, some best practices. Maybe you're looking at terms of leveling, how to bump up their work from a three to a four. I'm gonna star, oh, definitely Heathers, I'm gonna star. Oh, Jody, of course I've gotta star Jody's. I can actually star student work because then when I go at the very bottom to show responses, it's only gonna showcase the stars. So then that way I can really hone in on moving the teaching forward uh, and really modeling some strategies that I'm looking for. Um, just as much as you might wanna model some great things, Maybe a, a student is being a bit silly um, with their drawings or maybe inappropriate. If you go to the three dots, I would never do this to you, Steph, don't worry, but I would actually hide Steph's response. So when I go to show the responses, uh, the stars will be there, but also you can hide the response completely and no one would ever see it but you, the teacher. And you can remind students as well that, hey, um, uh, your name's attached to it. So. I mean, I know that you did that. So you can also use that as evidence with parents. If you need to remove a student, you can actually go to the top right roster. You can choose the three dots and you can block them from the session. So you do have that capability as well. But like I said, you can go through. So for something like this, you can choose the overlay view, which is really nice when you think about the draggable questions where they would all the answers would overlay one on top of the other. So I'm cognizant of time, so I have three more minutes, so I wanna make sure that I hit the important parts before we get to the questions. So I'm just gonna exit this uh, mode, and I'm gonna go to the top right. So when I talked about settings at the very beginning, if you click your face and you click my account, we have a premium account at Ottawa Catholic, which is awesome, and then you wanna click into your settings. Here's where you can toggle on and off some options. So here, classroom climate, so when you first logged in, you were asked how you feel. That's really great when you think of social emotional learning, and maybe a student didn't get a right response, but they had a red face. Maybe you can start to notice patterns in terms of how they're feeling, and then sort of their academic performance, right? And maybe you can make that link to their social emotional well-being. But you can turn that off. Immersive Reader is really great. So that's Microsoft's equivalent to Google's Read and Write and it works right within Pear Deck. Uh, it also works with uh, lots of languages. I think it's close to 80 languages now. So I don't have time to show you that, but you can reach out to your LT consultant to learn about it. Here is where you want to toggle on the takeaways. So toggle it on because you still have the, the choice to send them or not, but at least you have the choice. So toggle that on and you wanna require student logins. When you as the teacher uh, send the takeaways, when you download Pear Deck, you are automatically given a folder into your Google Drive. All of the takeaways you are the owner of, and you actually have a takeaways folder. So in that takeaways folder, I can actually see right now my Pear Deck live test. I can go in, and I can now see all of my students' work. So say I wanna provide feedback to the student to move their learning forward. Because it's a Google Doc, the beauty of it is if I click into the Google Doc, of course it's Steph Pearson's, we're just so connected. I can actually leave Pearson uh, comments and then we can start that feedback loop back and forth. So again, it's not gonna correct itself. That's more a Google Form thing if you're doing a formalized quiz. This really is great for um, some back and forth feedback loop between teacher and student. You also are always given a blank version, so you can do different things with that. So you have all of your student responses, um, as well you have a blank version, which is great. The students do not get a Pear Deck folder in their drive. This would be located in their shared with me folder. They also get an email notification that it exists. 
but they don't have a folder, they would have to move it, unfortunately, um, into a folder. You could do it for them um, using tools like Hapra and things like that. But again, reach out to your LT consultant for that. Um, I went through the teacher dashboard, how to get to it. Um, just to sort of summarize, don't design for what the teacher says. This was taken from Matt Miller. Design for what the student does. So really lead uh, using Pear Deck for, with the students in mind. Um, instead of just purely delivering content, really think about design it for what the student uh, does. This was a lot of info, Catherine. This is overwhelming. You talked really fast. Uh, where should I start? Try creating a slide deck with one slide. Do the drawing one, because I think that's a, that's a hook for you as a teacher to see that student work. Um, so I would just start with one slide, share it with students, see if it works, see if you engage some students. When it does work, and we know it will because we believe in you, start building those slide decks with different types of interactive questions. So that's the place to start. Don't get overwhelmed with the bells and whistles and the takeaways and all that. Just try and get your students engaged and responding. That's the goal. I have some resources down here. This is really great. So they have weekly wonders where you just copy the slide deck and use it. So very, very good. My favorite one is actually the Black History Month and it has three different age groups that you can use. Down here, click images for links, help videos, uh, resource bank, their YouTube channel, Twitter. Their branding is just amazing alone. I mean, look at it, it's fantastic. And getting started with Pear Deck. So use these um, because they're great places to get some things. Like I said, just released last night, teacher feedback. Here's their tweet. Um, it's linked to uh, their website with the article. Thank you. Uh, if you can, please provide some feedback in the top right-hand corner, click on my face. Uh, please give us some feedback how you enjoyed this webinar session and reach out if you have any questions. We are here to help. Okay. Wow, Catherine, I, I am just saying I was today years old learning a few of those things, including the countdown on uh, the slide deck. So I really appreciate you putting that out. Um, so we have a couple questions. Um, we're wondering when a teacher clicks through their, um, to allow Pear Deck to use the slide, the slide on, they were wondering if it's okay, it asked if it's okay to access and download all the files onto your drive. Is that safe for them to do that? Um, yes, and of course, Audra and staff, feel free to step in, but it is safe because when things are being saved to their Google Drive account, of course, that meets the privacy standards set out by our board, and it's using their Google account. So I believe all the files that are saved within the drive um, meets our privacy standards and is secure within the firewalls that we've set up. Absolutely, and that's how the takeaways are created. So if we don't allow those drives, that's how it actually knows how to sit on top of your slide deck. So Oh, that's uh, a good point, Steph, and it also links the student names with their responses. So if you don't want to know who said what, okay, maybe it's not required, but most often than not, uh, teachers want to know who said what. Exactly. Um, so you mentioned that we can access the slide deck. Uh, so again, we'll make sure that link is in the doobly-doos when we post it on the YouTube. Um, and one of the questions from the teachers was, can the students see any of the other students' answers while they're working on those slides? That's a great question. And the powerful thing about Pear Deck is that the teacher is in charge of that. So the default setting, just like you experienced in the slide deck today, you couldn't see anyone else's answers. The only time you could see student responses was when I showed them. So when I showcased those student responses, I was manually clicking show responses. And then again, like I said, you even can uh, dive even further down by choosing which strategies or responses you want to highlight, or you can actually delete responses that maybe are inappropriate. So you have full control over that, but the default is that no student sees any other student's responses. One of the questions was, can teachers send a link to the Pear Deck for students to click on rather than go through the student portal to access Pear Deck? Uh, yes, so uh, when you choose the teacher-led uh, option, you can choose the link that way. It's your preference. So the student paste for sure has to have the URL. You don't have a choice with student paste, but when you do the teacher-led one, they can go join pd.com, and then you get a little bit more of an overview in terms of your students logging in, but you do have two options. So at the bottom of that window is the code, but then you also have the link 
a little bit further underneath that. So your choice, whatever works best for you and your students. All right, I think that's all the questions we had. We had a lot of excitement on Twitter today as well. All right. But, yeah, you, you answered, I think, everyone else's question as you went, so, but certainly if anybody who'd asked a question that don't feel that they got a full answer, uh, please reach out to us on the, the slide deck and reach out to one of the consultants, we'd love to help you. Yeah, and I just want to jump in and thank Catherine for such an engaging uh, webinar. We definitely all learned a lot. I know I always learn new things when I hear um, from my colleagues, and uh, I definitely learn new things. Like, I didn't know that you could um, add little audio notes to, um, to your different Paradex slides. So that was something new that I learned today, and I'm excited for my next Paradex. And uh, I think it's also really important, um, your little comment that you made about just starting small and trying one little thing. What a great time to try those things at home. Um, you can throw up your little link to joinpd.com with the code in a workspace and students can just jump in and do a little doodle or do the daily arts challenge, the daily doodle. They could do that in Pear Deck. So that'd be a really great way to collect that too. So lots of awesome tips and suggestions. So thank you so much, Catherine, for sharing that with everybody. That was great. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating. And like we said, your LT Consultants uh, by Family of Schools is here to support you. So if this feels overwhelming, uh, just know that we're here to walk you through it. And if you're a principal or administrator, we would love to present to staff. Uh, we love to do those things, so please reach out. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm glad this is over. <laughs> it was very nerve wracking. Uh, yeah, very stressful, but uh, so I bow down to all those people who are doing these online webinars for staff because uh, I know how much stress it kind of put on me. So I appreciate everybody putting these together. Um, and if you really enjoyed today's session, tweet it out or send it to a colleague because I'm doing it again tomorrow. So uh, take care and we hope to see you soon. Bye.